Do you have problems with consistency on the pickleball court? I'm here today with Coach Tony, and we're going to help you get more consistent. Stay tuned. Bow, 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 bow. Bow. That goes in again. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is CJ Johnson and today I've got my good friend and partner Tony Roig from Into Pickle. Welcome Coach Tony. Thank you CJ, always a pleasure to be here and to get on the court and get some work done. Together we are Pickleball and we're dedicated to helping players over 50 live their best lives on and off the pickleball courts. All right, Tony, what can pickleball players do to become more consistent? CJ, the most important thing that a pickleball player can do to improve their consistency is to reduce variability in your stroke mechanics. What we're looking for is we're looking for a repeatable, consistent stroke mechanic. I don't want to be able to dink four times. I want to be able to dink 40 times, right? And the way I do that is by reducing the variability in my stroke mechanics. That's what you want to do. Okay, so I'll bite. What's the number one tip that we can give to players to help them to reduce that variability? The number one thing that you can do as a pickleball player to reduce the variability in your strokes is to use your shoulder as the primary driver of your paddle. Think about it this way, CJ. Whenever I'm playing a pickleball game, I'm moving my paddle through the air to hit the ball, right? That's how I interact with the ball. Well, what's moving my paddle? If what's moving my paddle is primarily my shoulder, I will reduce the variability in my game. If, however, the paddle is being moved by my elbow or my wrist, now I have three joints involved, lots of variability, folks. That's where a lot of mistakes happen. Well, Tony, can you show us what that looks like? What's the correct motion that players should be looking for? Absolutely. So basically, the, the, the motion that we talk about is the pendulum swing. And the pendulum swing simply means that it's driven from my shoulder and a pendulum swings like this, right? So the shoulder is, is the hinge that the pendulum swings on. What we're trying to avoid is using too much of this and too much of this. So basically when you see a swing that has a lot of motion like this, particularly when players are adding spins to the game, which is a whole nother conversation. But when players are moving the paddle all over the place, that is really, really difficult and increases the chances for error. Tony, let me make sure that this is clear for players. I want to feel the motion coming from here in the shoulder, not the elbow or the wrist. So it's not this type of motion or this yeah. type of motion. It's a motion that's pretty simple, actually. Very, very compact, very simple. Correct. And the way to think about it is that when I drive, when I, when I use this as the primary driver, the shoulder is the primary driver, you can do this over and over again a thousand times without having to worry about making like all of a sudden it's flipping one way or another way. Whereas if you start using the other joints, that's going to happen. And what I like that you did there, CJ, which is what, what we use, right, with, with our players, with our students, is if you use your offhand, so for CJ, that's your left hand, for me, it's my right hand, and you place it on your shoulder and you move, you can feel that muscle contract as you move and as you move the paddle, and that's what you want to feel. Now, Tony, one of the other things that we see quite often is when people start to do this, the motion looks pretty unnatural. Um, what do we need to do to make it effective? So yeah, what can happen is when we say use this as your primary driver of the shoulder, what tends to happen is players who don't have racket sports background, right, they tense up. So their arm becomes very tense and then they, they, they believe that they cannot move these, these two joints. Not the case. Your arm's going to, these joints are going to flex them as you move. So it, basically as I swing, you're going to see some movement in, in the wrist. The elbow's going to contract a little bit or move a little bit. What we're trying to avoid though is these being primary drivers. We don't want these to be imparting a lot of energy into the paddle. And Tony, one of the things that we see quite often is we see players trying to use that wrist in a variety of ways to fix things that are already wrong with their strokes. Yeah, and that can introduce even more problems with the stroke. So if you're having issues with your stroke, consider not not bringing the wrist in, consider where you're hitting the ball, right? So maybe you're hitting the ball a little bit too far down, meaning like this, so it goes into the net, or too far up here, resulting in the ball going a little bit too high. Consider adjusting where you're making contact with the ball as opposed to trying to use the wrist to make up for it. 
so and since you mentioned contact with the ball, where is the ideal place to contact the ball? Usually it's about a 45 degree angle uh, for the paddle. So really out in front like this. So if you, if you reach out like this, this is going to be a good spot. Up here, the ball's going to go a little bit higher than I want it to. Down here, that ball's going to travel into the net. So somewhere in, from here to here is usually going to be a pretty good place to make contact with the ball, depending on what you're trying to do with the ball. Well, the good thing is we're on the pickleball court. Let's show them how to do it. All right, let's do it. So let's dink a little bit. We're going to dink on the forehand side to show the mechanic here. And so what we're doing is we're basically lifting from with the shoulder. So the paddle is being moved by the shoulder. Ready position, bring it down, lift it from the shoulder. And if you want to feel it, you can put your offhand here like we showed you a second ago, and you can feel that work coming from the shoulder. The shoulder is the primary driver there. Now, what some players do is they start using the elbow, right? So there, I'm starting to use my elbow there a little bit. It's windy out here today, so see, but see, I'm, having to use, I'm using my elbow on that one, right? So what happens with the elbow? Now I'm introducing more variability in the shot, or I could also use the wrist. So I could basically use the wrist like that, and then the, the ball will start flying all over the place if I'm using the wrist, because I can't, I can't really control the shot. If I go back to the shoulder, right, now all I have to do is basically bowl the ball, if you will, to where I want it to go, just like that. Nice little toss from the shoulder. Tony, a few of those high ones from the elbow, I'm not sure I would have been so kind. I think I would have slapped those back at you. There you go. Sometimes the, the, you get pop-ups and things like that from adding variability into the shot. You had a question also about the point of contact. Let's show that real quick with the dinks. So what we're going to do is I'm going to dink from different points of contact. So I'm going to dink first from the spot that I want to dink from, which is about a 45, and that ball lifts beautifully every time. See that ball lifts beautifully every time on the 45. Now. If I hit it higher up on the point of contact uh, trajectory arc, you can see that that ball flies higher. If I hit it later, the ball goes low. So if your balls are going low, never clearing the top of the net, you're hitting the ball too late. If the balls are going too sky high, you're hitting the ball too soon. The magic, the, the Goldilocks, right? The Goldilocks spot is right around here, and that's how you get the nice arc on your dinks. In just a moment, we're gonna show you how to check yourself to make sure that you are using your shoulder. But in the meantime, if you want more information on the three pillars of pickleball, visit us at wearepickleball.com forward slash pillars. Now, let's show you how to see if you're doing it right. Well, I can guarantee you, it's pretty fun to be out on the courts with, with me and Tony. Uh, you have a coach inside of your pocket, and most people don't use this to its fullest ability. What should they do, Tony? Well, I mean, all of us have one of these. All of these have a camera. You could get a tripod if you want to on Amazon. They're super cheap, but you don't need it. I got my order jug set up here, coach. I'm going to lay this here. I'm going to put it on the video setting. I'm going to lay it there just as long as it can catch me. I'm going to start the video, and then Coach CJ and I are going to start dinking. And what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for the mechanics coming from the shoulder. What I'm trying to, I'm trying to see if I'm doing, am I doing this, right? Am I doing this when I'm hitting? Am I using the elbow to hit the ball? Or am I using the wrist to hit the ball? Things like that. So the camera lets me see that, because a lot of times, right coach, we, we don't see it unless the camera shows it to us. Most of the time we don't have the right conception of what we're doing ourselves, and that doesn't lie. So set up your phone and use your camera. Today has been awesome, Tony. Can you give us a quick recap of what players need to look for when they're out on the courts? Absolutely. If you're trying to work on your consistency, the main thing you want to look for is to make sure your shoulder is the primary driver. When that paddle's moving, make sure that your shoulder is moving the paddle. Avoid the elbow and the wrist being the primary drivers of the paddle. And if you're not sure whether you're doing it right or not, make sure you use that tip that we showed you with, the, with your phone, the camera on your phone. Video yourself. Make sure that the shoulder is what's moving the paddle. Now, if you'd like more videos to help you play your best pickleball, make sure you click on the playlist right over here, because together we can train smart, live bold, and age well.